morning everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel, Nicole Flower House. On here I share all about my cut flower garden. It is one of my goals this year to get my rain barrels set up so I can use rainwater irrigation. I am close to getting that started. I'm waiting for our house to be painted on the exterior so I can put the barrels back where they belong and get them plumbed and hooked up. These bachelor's buttons right here, I'm about to deadhead and take all the spent blooms off of it so it will look much nicer. These bachelor buttons over here, I've already done that so you can see the difference between the two. The bed right here with the poppies in it is a complete mess and this week I will be harvesting all the pods out of here. I'll have quite a bit of space to plant something in here. I'm not sure what I'll do. The basil in here isn't doing that great so I'll probably sprinkle some basil seeds or maybe I'll put some zinnias or cosmos in here. The grouping of bachelor's buttons that I have in this raised garden bed have fallen over. I do have wire mesh in here. I just think they're supported way too low on the plant. One of the things I'm noticing this year is that the hoops is what I've attached the wire mesh to, which gives kind of a variable height at which the plant is supported. And when the mesh is kind of close to where the hoop meets the garden box, it's just not tall enough to support these plants. So I'm gonna put some bamboo stakes in here and use some twine to give more support to these so they'll stay upright. Another thing I may consider in the winter once everything is spent and cleaned up is trying to find out a way that the support is not arched over the hoops but is horizontal so everything is supported at the same height. And this flower right here is called Dara. It is green when it's immature, but it will color up to a purplish pink. This cucumber plant has established and is doing very good. It's climbing the trellis pretty much on its own now. I had to train it up a little bit, but now it's doing fine. The seedlings I transplanted down here look nice and green, and I think they will do well also. plant right here with the pods on it is called nigella and I think this one is the green variety so the pods will probably stay green. I planted another variety where the pods turn a deep purplish kind of black color but I'm not sure if I put those out this year or not. I found an interesting little bug on the amaranth this week. I wonder if this is what's chewing all the holes. 
If you know anything about this bug, please feel free to put it in the comments. I think if we all start showing all the bugs in our gardens and everyone can help identify, it can be a fun resource for everyone to read the comments and find out what these bugs are in the garden. This right here is where I've topped the amaranth plants. You can see how much I took off of them. They were way too big for me to use any of this foliage and cut flower arrangements. It's just huge. So I'm hoping where this is healed over that I'll get offshoots of smaller and thinner stems and smaller leaves. Most of the marigolds that I have on the edge of this bed have gone to flower as well and I'm really excited to get cutting on those. I need to get them cut so that they start producing better stems. A lot of these flowers are way down in the plant so I find that happens frequently when the plant first starts flowering but then it starts shooting off better stem length as the plant matures and the season goes on. It's the time of year for me to take out the sweet peas. I really enjoyed them, especially the scent and how they framed the garden as they climbed the trellises down the center aisle of the beds. But they do not like hot weather and it is time for them to come out and for the tomatoes and cucumbers to take over these trellises. Now this is the Strawberry Hill Rose. My husband built this teepee for me out of some, these are logs I guess, I don't know, they're sapling trees, so very small trees that we took down when we were clearing our property. And I just saved them along our back fence until I needed them. So he put this together for me to support this rose. I didn't know it was a climbing rose and it had fallen over. I'd shown that in a couple videos previous to this one how bad it was so I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The posts are supporting each other because they're all leaned up against each other. I didn't really dig this very far into the dirt. That's just kind of sitting on top. So the weight of the logs and how they're kind of positioned against each other is what's holding this up. So we'll see throughout the season how it does. I really don't think it's gonna fall over, but I guess you never know. And I just took twine and wrapped it around at certain points to give the rows more support. And then my husband tied them together at the top. I couldn't reach that far up, so he tied those up at the top. This plant is called Status. It's flowering now. I've never used this. Um, I've never grown it before, but I really like it. So I'll be cutting on that soon. The Orlea is looking good. It's ready to be cut on as well. And at the end of this trellis is a tomato plant that is very well established and taking off. It has blossoms and should have fruit on it soon. It is a cherry tomato, so it will fruit earlier than my other ones. This is one of my new David Austin roses. It's called Thomas A. Beckett. I don't think it's getting enough space right here with this cilantro that has just gone completely crazy. So this week I'll be cutting all the blooms off of this and if I don't have enough bouquets to make to use these up, I will hang these upside down and try to dry them. I haven't dried flowers before, but that's something I'm interested in learning how to do. So when I take this plant out, I will use as much as I can in fresh bouquets and the rest I will hang to dry.
And here's another little buddy making its way across my rain barrels. I don't think it's a ladybug. It's a lot more orange than a traditional one. So if you know what that is, go ahead and throw it down in the comments and help us all out. This flower here is also Dara. It's a more mature flower than the one I showed earlier. So you can see that it is coloring up compared to the other one that was green and still tight and not open. My snapdragons are still looking nice. These are a little too far gone to cut and do really well in arrangements. I'll still cut them and bring them inside for my own use, but this isn't something I could use in a bouquet that I was selling for a client, just because they're a little too open. Also, the weather is getting a little warm, so I'm not sure how much longer these will look nice like this. I do have a few successions coming on in another garden bed but the pollinators sure do appreciate them, so they are still serving a wonderful purpose. This garden bed has celosia in it, and in the holes where the celosia didn't germinate, I've put some celosia as well as some zinnia seedlings. So I'm excited to see the beautiful mix of flowers that will come out of here as it matures. I'm thinking that'll probably be late July or August before I start getting flowers on these. And I do wanna show you up close, not too long ago, maybe about a week ago, I pinched the center stalk out of these celosia. So you can see I have three shoots here and they're all coming off of the center where I've pinched that off. Pinching your plants gives you a lot more stems per plant if it's the type of plant that you can pinch. This right here is the first year I've grown this and I am loving it. It's called Silene Blushing Lanterns. It's kind of hard to pick up on the camera that I'm using, but there is a very slight blush pink to it that is so pretty and looks really good in flower arrangements. And behind the blushing lanterns, I have jewels of opar and also yarrow. Here is an update on the sunflower bed. I'm so excited. I'm starting to see blooms and heads coming on the flowers. This bed is mostly going to be for my enjoyment because these flowers are giant and will not work in cut arrangements or bouquets. But this is my first year actually successfully getting some sunflowers to survive the deer and critters that we have on our property. So I can't wait. These sunflowers are towering, they're beautiful, and I just love walking out into the garden and enjoying them. And here's another look at that orange spotted beetle or ladybug looking critter. Here 
Here are my rutbeckia. They are putting on flowers as well. I think in my zone these are perennial. I'm going to have to go back and look and make sure. But I think these will come back year after year if I protect them enough from our winter weather. At the base of this trellis, I have something new to me this year. I'm trying some miniature pumpkins. They are ornamental, but I got them from Seed Savers Exchange. That's where I got the seeds from, and the packet says that you can eat them as well. So I'll definitely be trying both of those. I have trouble getting large pumpkins to maturity because of vine borers and squash bugs. So maybe these smaller ones, I'll be able to snag some pumpkins off of them. Next, I wanna take you through my dahlia patch. This is really an experiment that paid off for me and I'm so happy about it. I transplanted these tubers from different garden beds into these ones over the fall last year. And I left the tubers in the ground over the winter, which in my zone in 7B is kind of on the borderline as to whether you can leave them in the ground or have to dig them up. But here's a comparison of size of some tubers that I planted this spring from ones that I ordered online. And you can see how much smaller they are. These ones that were left in the ground and did survive the winter and came back shot up much earlier and are already putting on buds and flowers. So it won't be long before I'll just have an abundance of dahlias and I'm just so happy about that. This winter, I plan on doing the same thing, but I think I'm going to take extra precautions to help protect these from the winter weather. I feel kind of lucky that they survived. I'm not sure if they will every year, and it's still a risk that they might not, but I think I will put hoops on these beds, put some plastic over them in the winter to keep the winter rains off of them because dahlia tubers have a tendency to rot, and that'll keep them a little bit warmer and a little bit drier. Most of these dahlias, I could probably take a good guess at what the varieties are, but I do not know what they are for sure. I did not keep track of them last year when I moved them from the other garden beds into these ones, so I can make guesses, but I don't know them for sure, so I'm not gonna put them up on the screen or anything because I don't wanna put up misinformation, but some of these I can probably guess what they are, but I love them all. Each and every one in this bed, well, in this entire dahlia patch is going to be a surprise, and I love that, so I'm just really, really thrilled for the dahlia patch this year.
This garden bed over here is blooming. It's a gladiolus. I intended to fill up this garden bed and the one next to it with gladiolus, but in a staggered time frame. So each week or every other week, I was going to plant a new row of bulbs so they would all mature at different times. And I've completely missed the window on that. Um, I could probably start trying that again, but the bulbs I have are currently stored in my garage, which is not ideal storage temperatures. Um, it's way too hot in there. So they're all starting to sprout, and I think I just need to get them into the ground sooner rather than later so that I don't ruin them. And maybe next year I can stay on schedule with getting those succession planted. I'm still enjoying a few blooms here and there from the flocks. I'm hoping that when I cut them, the plants will become more bushier and put off more stems. This plant back here is actually parsley that has gone to flower. It's similar to the cilantro, but it has a more pink tone on the flower. So I really love how this has turned out as well. These sweet peas are barely hanging on as well. They do not like the hot weather and you can see they have gotten to seed. I have pods all over them. It might be kind of fun to dry those pods and use them in wreaths or some kind of dried arrangements or even try to harvest seeds out of them. These plants right here are new. I had a friend give me some raspberry plants I think they're raspberries. They're either thornless raspberries or thornless blackberries. 90% sure they're raspberries, but we'll find out. Anyways, because they're thornless, they have excellent foliage you can use in arrangements. I'm happy to try that out once these plants get more established because I believe they have a really good vase life. And as I've predicted, I can now tell which of these plants are zinnias and which ones are weeds. The zinnias are growing nice and tall and the weeds are a horizontal grower and are just growing flat across the mulch. So it's kind of hard to pick it up on the camera, but here's a zinnia, here's another zinnia, and all this stuff down here along the ground is weeds. So I can definitely get working on cleaning this bed up and then planting more zinnias in the holes where things didn't germinate. And I do have plenty of seedlings that are ready to go out in the garden and fill in all those spaces and empty gaps so that the garden will just be so lush and full this year. Here are my Lysianthus seedlings. I think they're looking good how they're supposed to. I haven't done that before and I know they are super slow growing. And I think in my zone they can be overwintered. So I'm not gonna give up on these seedlings. Here are my Eucalyptus seedlings. They are doing nicely, I believe. They're not really standing up. They're kind of falling over. I don't remember if that's how they were last year when I planted out new seedlings of Eucalyptus. This variety over here, some of them are starting to branch and look really nice. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna to like top all of these off so that they start branching pretty low toward the base or if I should just let them go. My sunflower experiment on my patio did not work. They were not getting enough sun. So they obviously got super leggy and were just reaching for the sun. So I put them out here in the yard they're either going to recover, die off, or get eaten by animals. So we'll have to find out what goes on with them. This garden bed has a combination of zinnias and weeds, like the other one where I was trying to figure out which was which. So these can be cleaned up soon and planted out with new seedlings to fill in the gaps as well.
These are Cosmos seedlings, and this one actually is at the perfect height to be pinched. So pinching is just taking that center stalk out so it'll produce more branches. I also have some dahlias over here. These were new tubers planted this spring, and they are starting to reach the point of being able to be pinched. Well, that is all for today's cut flower garden tour. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. And the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower loving friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.